What's going on, y'all? So let's What's going on, everybody? So we are back. First of all, happy Easter to everyone. Um, I hope you had a good day, as much as a good day as possible, with your loved ones, if you could, with your babies, if you could. Well, I hope you could. Shit. <laughs> Who got your baby? Who got your baby? Okay, girl. Uh-uh. But anyway, unless they with their mamas or something, sir, who got your baby? But anyway, um, this is the Real Housewives of Atlanta season two, no, season 12, episode 21, moving up and moving on, okay? So the episode starts off, we got Portia and Dennis, you know, with um Dennis' mama talking about little PJ and, you know, how she slept in the bed with them, with her, and basically was trying to, you know, get some milk or whatever out of her, whatever, he trying to get some milk out of her too. Now it's like, that's cute, that's whatever. I'm still kind of on the fence about Dennis, but whatever, if they want to play and make this thing trying to work, let them do what they gotta do. Then we get this whole scene with Eva, okay? Um, Eva packing up her condo. Um, and like we said last week when she sat down with Cynthia, I believe it was last week, she told her that, you know, they closed on the house and they will be moving out Friday. And I guess they finally about to move out. And that's what's going on with them. She glad, you know, they finally got a home. Mm. A home where, you know, the kids can grow up and be good and, you know, have a forever home. So, that's fine. Moving on from that, we get Candy, okay? Candy, baby. Candy come over there to Kenya house, okay? And, you know, she over there talking about this whole situation that went down between her and Ty. She crying to Kenya about it because she just feels so bad. If you have been looking at Real Housewives of Atlanta for a while, ever since Candy and Ty got together, this has been one of the most consistent issues that has been going on between them. Um, you know, prioritizing work over family or family over work. Whichever one, they still have not gotten it right in 2019 whenever they filmed this, okay? They have still not gotten it right because Candy, you know, she's always working, 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 working. And it's like, you know, she's feeling that guilt of, you know, am I not putting my family first? Am I not giving them enough time? You know, she's telling them how when she was filming for The Shy, you know, they don't film on Saturday. So she came out and she went directly to Portia's little party or whatever for the March of Dimes event. Then she was hosting, you know, uh, that the next day, I guess, the Rock Nation Women Empowerment thing. And so, you know, these are the couple of days that you have off and your family is expecting you to have fun with them or whatever. Just spend some time with them and you're not doing it. And that st causes a conflict at this point. You know, she has always been in this work mode type of mentality. Like she got to find a new uh, means of revenue just in case this one fell. And I understand the way that she works. But, you know, you have to come to some type of compromise when you have a family because it's not just about you. And like she said, it's not just about me that I'm supporting. It's not just my family that I'm supporting. It's, you know... Um, other family members, other friends or whatever, and she has to uh, fix that situation. Yes, you do. Some of them people that you probably support and they probably able-bodied in a motherfucker and they can get up and get their own jobs and take care of their own selves, okay? They probably using you. I don't know the situation, but I'm pretty sure at least one is, okay? Listen, act by. No, let me stop playing. Let me stop playing. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. But um, anyway... So she was, she got into her feelings about that. Then they started talking about the sex scene. Once again, let me just say this. Okay. I get it. Don't no man want to see they woman or whatever with another man and all that. Okay, fine. But if it's for work and we know that the sex ain't real and it's stimulated or whatever, you watching somebody else's wife doing it when you watch movies and you be like, hey, let me see them titties, you know? So when it, like, like, let it the fuck go. Let it the fuck go, Ty. Okay? Let it the fuck go, Candy. You did what you did. You got paid for it. You didn't really fuck nobody. It's acting. Let it go. It happens. It happens. Like, grow up. Like, she not cheating on you. She not, um, you know, having feelings for somebody else or whatever. She coming home to you. Well, um, we would hope so, you know. She coming back to Atlanta for you. So, hey, let it go. Quit dragging this out, okay? I'm, I'm tired of hearing about this. And like Brock said... <clears throat> This sex thing, because y'all know I watched the shy, I reviewed the shy, I'm waiting for it to come back in June. Um, This sex thing better be bombing shit, okay? It better be bombing shit. It better be the same way that Kenya described whatever sex thing she was talking about. 
hitting it from the back, from the front, against the wall, on the table, bitch, on the chair. Listen, and she it better hit all four walls, okay? In every orifice, okay? That's what better be going on the way they talking about this goddamn sex scene. I'm so tired of it, okay? Moves on from it. Then they get into, you know, Ken, Ken, you're talking about something damn. You got so much money already. What else do you need, okay? Some people just don't like to just sit down. Um, when you Some people, when they come from nothing, they get into their mind, you know, I got to continue to work, continue to work because it's a possibility that I can lose it. And just in case something happened, one thing failed, I got this as a backup or whatever, and I never go broke. That's probably the mentality that Candy got. So, you know, you just never know why they do things the way that they do. And some people just not comfortable just sitting still, you know. But um, they get on Kenya and what's going on between her and Mark and how she never thought that she would be in a situation where she wouldn't be talking to him and things like that. She hasn't heard from him because she still got the nigga blocked and all that shit woo 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 to be quite honest i'm tired of her storyline too to be quite honest i'm tired of the season okay i'm like this is episode 21 when is this shit over because we got a whole new episode next week it's next week the season finale damn okay and um you know candy said you looking back at your situation and you be thinking that you be going through something until you figure out and look at other people's shit and you be like, damn, let me shut the fuck up because we ain't going through the shit that they going through. It happens. It happens, you know. And to be quite honest, I actually do like Candy and Kenya little relationship and the fact that they can have a little girl time with each other. It's cute. So we get Cynthia. She's at the Cynthia Winery. Um... And Mal is there, you know, doing her job because she works there, manages this and everything. So Cynthia don't be there. And they trying to figure out how they going to make this thing work because on most days, you know, they was like, I guess after this little birthday party, business kind of picked up or whatever. But, you know, throughout the week, it do be kind of slow. Cynthia trying to um see what she trying to do to, um you know, some incentives or whatever um to get people to show up or whatever during the week. And... I was like, I don't know, Cynthia, what's happening? Y'all got to do better than this. And then, you know, she's talking about some, they can have birthday parties or whatever, like uh, on Wednesdays. And she was like, well, Wednesdays we close. And if we're going to be open for stuff like that, we're going to have to change the sign out there that say we open and all that stuff. It was like, I understand that, but, you know, we can get somebody to come in and work and whatever. It was like, no, because people need to have at least two days off. Cynthia said, girl, since when? Who need to have two days off? I don't have two days off. I said, uh-uh, don't do that. I had flashbacks to when I was actually working. Girl, the fact that I got to say when I was actually working as if I ain't got no job. Because technically speaking, ain't nobody working unless you essential. Okay? We ain't working like that. Girl, back in the day when I had to do all them overtimes and I came on this camera tired as hell. Girl, please. Uh-uh. And that made me flashback. I said, Cynthia, I know what it's like to do six days a week. And then a couple of times I had to do seven days a week, back to back. It's not legal. It's not right. Don't do that to your people, okay? Then they're going to try to revolt, all right? Like, girl, no, unless they really need the money. Uh-uh, we don't do no stuff like that. Now, see, you probably work six, seven, eight days a week. Well, seven, you know, because that's you. But us, we got to have a life too, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, they get into talking about... What they going to do. I, I really don't care about the little winery. You know, they going to figure that shit out. It's Cynthia. She want to do meet and greets and stuff. Mal said, listen, bitch, you ain't even here. Okay, you don't even know your own schedule. So how you going to do meet and greet with Mike? I mean, I can be out there. Then I can come up in here. Then I can go over there to L.A. Then I can come back out here to Atlanta and, you know, do all this stuff. Meanwhile, Noel, she out there. Um, trying to do the audition for the Salt and Pepper movie. If you saw the Clark Sisters um, movie last night, they show a trailer for the Salt and Pepper movie. And to be quite honest, after looking at the Clark Sisters, I'm worried. Because ain't them girls, at least when I was looking at the Clark Sisters, they got people that look just like them or somewhat like them. You know, in their, their size, their stature, you know, can sing and all this stuff. Girl, I looked at the Salt and Pepper girls and I said, who the fuck is this? Who the fuck is this? <laughs> I said, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to judge 
But um, girl, I'm a little worried. Okay, it was giving me the Aaliyah movie tease when they uh hired that skinny bitch to be um Missy Elliott. No shade to her girlfriend, cause I don't know you. You just needed a job, and I understand. But baby, they should have got somebody a little chunkier to be Missy Elliott. You know what I'm saying? He 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 how? You know? And I was just like, what's going on? So Noelle, you trying to be an extra up in the movie? That's cute. And Mama just dropped out of school, I guess, cause Daddy was on uh Leon. I went to exhale. Leon. Yeah, you know, he was like, listen, if you ain't in school, you're not just going to be sitting around getting a free ride. You're going to have to be working. You're going to be doing something because you're just not going to be sitting around. And she's like, I agree 100%. I bet you do. Because then it's going to cut everything off. Leon look like he don't play. Okay, that man does not play. Listen. What is it with these celebrity kids on this show that keep dropping out of school? Y'all be getting free wide. And I understand that school, college ain't for everybody. But damn, if I had a free ride or I had the opportunity to get up here on scholarship or, you know, I know my parents can be able to pay for it, I'd jump at that chance. You know, that means debt free and all that shit. But, you know, like I said, college ain't for everybody. And, hey, some of them motherfuckers lazy, okay? Moving on from that, um, we get into this whole thing with Portia and Dennis. They up there trying to take pictures with little PJ. PJ is unimpressed. PJ does not give a shit. PJ was like, Daddy, stop it, okay? Now they finally got the P, um... Finally got the picture, and then Portia put her up in her little hat chair. I said, is that a gold hat chair? That's some ghetto shit, okay? And I, I, I liked it. <laughs> Does that make me ghetto? You know, I'm from the hood, so we, we do. That's some bougetto shit like that, bitch. I said, you know what? If I had a kid, baby, I splurge on my child. I will splurge. You know what? I, it ain't the... Oh, you up here looking all good and your child looking raggedy as fuck. No, I'm raggedy as fuck and my child gonna represent what I wish I could attain, okay? Bitch, if it ain't coming in my size, girl, it's coming in my child's size and they gonna stunt for me, okay? That's just how it's gonna be, bitch. Oh, I wish I wanted kids. Maybe that'll change, but <laughs> I don't see it in the future because let me tell you something. Y'all wouldn't be able to tell my child nothing. Little sport ass brat. That's what it would be like. Y'all be like, listen, listen. You're going to get your ass beat because you too goddamn spoiled. You talk too damn much and you're going to talk to the wrong person. And you cussed out your teachers. That's going to be my child. That's going to be my child if I ever had one. But anyway, moving on if my partner had one because I ain't having kids, you know. I can't. I can't. Y'all, I bless everybody who can carry a child. I can barely deal with the period cramps that I am having. I can't. I can't. Anyway, so they having this whole issue about whether or not he going to move back down to Duluth where she at in her place. He don't want to move down there, you know. And they just the same issues that we've been having with them too. And at this point, every time I see them talking about the moving and him giving the same excuses as to why he don't want to move and how long it is from the city and what he got to do there. And, you know, he did move there at one point. She said, bitch, you had to get kicked out because you cheated. Okay, you fucked that up. But I thought that, you know, as soon as we got back on the right page, you was going to bring your ass right back. You know, and we was going to start this over again. And I said, you know what? You got to talk about these things. And obviously, they ain't really been talking about these things, you know. And at this point, I just don't know what Dennis and her. And her. You know, he seems like... He wants to, a part of me don't want to believe this, but a part of me believes like Dennis want to stay up in the city because he got some things going on that he don't want Portia to know. Okay. Am I the only one that feel that way? I mean, it's a track history. It's a track history. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, what's going on, Mr. Dennis? And then you talking about, you know, the wedding and how you just really want to go ahead and get married over here or whatever. And I'm just like... It's not important to him. It don't feel like it's important to him. And y'all really need to sit down and have a conversation off cameras, okay? Because these little conversations that I feel like they be having on camera, it don't really mean shit. It really don't. And it's just be for the camera. That's what I feel like sometimes. Dennis up here talking about something. He don't want no wedding or whatever. No, he don't want the big ceremony. That's what he don't want. Because he don't want people coming there that probably going to be judging him. And that ain't really there for him. I said, well, nigga, you shouldn't have fucked up in the first place. You should have thought about that. Okay? Of course, Portia pissed off because then they bring up the prenup. And, you know, how he 
um, feel about that and he feeling salty about the fact that you are already acting like what's yours is yours and what's mine is mine because of the way that, you know, you kicked me out and, you know, I ain't leaving nothing. Bitch, you fucked up, so why should you get in? Boy, if you don't shut up, I was with Portia. You ain't getting shit tonight, okay? Um, Moving along from that, Nene, girl... <laughs> First of all, yes for having the song, her song being played, doing her scene, promo, okay? But, <laughs> but, girl, did we need to see that? First of all, Nene has a nice body, all right? Nene has a nice body. But, listen, Greg, I like Greg and all, you know, he put the rose petals down, come out there with her little lingerie on. It was tasteful and everything, you know what I'm saying? Something that your mama would put on or whatever, but it was nice. It was nice, okay? And, you know, they talking about their relationship and, you know, the ups and downs that they've been through. And Nene had to put out there, you know, that she been married the longest and probably got the strongest relationship and marriage out of all of the girls or whatever. Okay, fine. Toot your own horn. Toot, too, you know? And, and, and just talking about the struggles that they had with Kim being in sick and stuff like that the year before, you know, open marriages and all this stuff, yada, yada, yada. What got me was when they were sitting on that bed and um, Nene said, you want to watch a movie? Greg said, uh-uh, we can make a movie. They going to call me Backdoor Billy. Roof, roof. I said, no, baby. No, baby. And she'll be told, like I said, because I like Greg. I like Greg. But Greg don't look like he know how to fuck the shit out of Nene. Like, that's probably why she out here acting the way that she acting now. Because she ain't getting dicked down properly, okay? And that's coming from a gay, okay? And I'm talking about myself. All right, she just don't know what. I, I don't know. Like, do y'all, can y'all see that? It look like... It look like my grandparents trying to get it in. And I know they still getting it. And like, no, no. <laughs> I ain't need to see that. Did they play underneath the covers and shit? Knowing damn well they ain't do nothing. I said, Manny, did you pull this dick out? Girl, okay, jack them all. <laughs> so we finally get to see um the outside of Eva's house. You know, she's a homeowner. She was like, I'm a homeowner at 35. Congratulations, okay? Then we get Candy, you know, she's face FaceTime and Tide from Chicago. She's on break. Y'all notice how um she posted that picture of her and Lena and Lena had her face blurred. They was like, girl, nah, we don't approve, okay? Don't put my face up on this shit. But um, <laughs> I find that so hilarious because when she posted the picture of her with Luke James, Luke James had his um face blurred out too. I don't know if it's him doing it, them doing it, or, you know, some legal stuff, but whatever, their face was blurred. And Ty was on a movie set. He wants to do the baby shower. Um, mind you, you got Shamia, you got Don Juan, you got Karma, okay, you got everybody from Candy Code and I's team, you know, trying to get together and trying to get this whole thing together about this baby shower, which he wants to have like a movie set up or whatever on a movie, uh, movie lot, you know what I'm saying? Looks like they was probably at Tyler Perry Studios, you know, I don't know. Um, the shit big as hell, so hey, probably. But, um, you know, they was dealing with that and seeing what was going on with that. Moving on from that. Uh, we get Cynthia going over there to Kenya place and Kenya just having flashbacks about Mark. And to be quite honest, and I'm not trying to be insensitive, I'm tired of hearing about it. I'm tired of hearing about it. Divorce that man and move the fuck on. Because every time you keep on telling us about stuff and we keep learning new stuff about him, it's making us pissed off that you or most of us pissed off. Because girl, listen, I don't care how you feel about Kenya. Don't nobody deserve to be up in no shit like this, to be quite honest, all right? I'm not the biggest Kenya fan. Girl, I ain't a fan at all. But she hasn't been irritating me this whole season that much. You know what I'm saying? So I can see and I can empathize with the girl. You know what I'm saying? Because the humanistic side of me is like, bitch, why? the fuck would you stay with something like this this man ain't been treating you right he ain't got to be abusing you or whatever but it's other ways that people don't get treated right in relationships and there were so many red flags and you still decided to go what are you that desperate to be in a relationship like i just didn't understand it and you up here talking about the clothes and cynthia was surprised me and cynthia was surprised there was a whole bunch of clothes up in there that was his because the last time we saw that um closet it didn't even have that many clothes in it that was his it looked like they had just brought them shits okay and she was like basically he comes and he was building up his little repertoire building up his little you know clothes in the closet each time he came he put more and more and more you know and every time he walked she walked past when he not there she see his clothes or you know, smell his cologne and it will remind him, remind her of him and stuff like that. And, um, Cynthia's like, this girl is putting up with a whole bunch of shit 
only because she got Brooklyn. Because the, the Kenya that I know, if Brooklyn wasn't in the picture, she wouldn't be putting up with this mess. They can't even fucking FaceTime each other, okay? He want to see Brooklyn. The nanny is on the FaceTime with Brooklyn. I said, what type of shit? When she said, girl, I want to be a ride to die for my husband or whatever, but I'm not trying to be no punchy bag slash doormat. I said, well, technically speaking, that's what you've been for the past couple of years. A punching bag slash doormat, okay? And not punching bag in the literal sense, but, you know, meaning that you are being taken over and just run the fuck over. Like, come on. And then said, this, this, like... It just seems so much secrecy or whatever with him. Why he don't want you to meet his parent parents? And he said that the baby ain't met the um parents yet either. Like, what is going on? What is going on? They can't FaceTime the baby? Like, I just don't get that whole situation. And that would have been enough for me. Okay, what is the situation that's going on with your family that I can't have any access, access to it? to them like Cynthia said what if something happened what if something happened to March and we ain't got nothing you know no way of going out and, and, and saying telling the people what's going on or whatever because I don't have information I don't have you know I'm not allowed to have that information like come on you know and Cynthia was ready to cut the shit up and I was like I would have did the same thing Angela Bassett that shit bitch it was like what if he come back and he wanted stuff listen we'll ship it off and if he want to come back and we want to work on this and we work on it he can bring it bad but until the end come on Cynthia I'm just gonna go out and I'm gonna let the movers do this because I don't want to look at his stuff so and I'm gonna put I'm gonna put like a paper in the window so I don't have to look I said can you girl fuck that nigga <laughs> so we got Eva in her place which surprisingly how long she been up in there because she got everything together you know Cynthia come over there you know, um, she asked that he's going to let any of the other girls. The producer said, are you going to let any of the other girls come in? And if so, who? She said, girl, please. Okay. Truth be told, she will probably let Candy come up in there. Maybe Portia, but, you know, anybody else, I just don't see it. But I don't know. Like, why do I have to have you up in my house? <laughs> why? You see it on TV. You don't got to be there, you know, especially if we ain't that close. But they get to talking about the house and, you know, um... First of all, Eva kids. Eva kids, when Marley took little Mikey to go get that um chocolate milk and they was walking behind them, uh, just looking and listening to what was going on, that was some real shit. Because y'all know kids don't stay in their room, especially when company is over. They want to be all up in grown folks' business. I said, finally got a real ass moment. But anyway... Um, you know, she was talking about how Kevin, her, uh, Marley's father wants, you know, custody of the baby and wants, um, to change her name, her last name back to his last name. And I don't know how I feel about that. I understand where Eva coming from. Like, you are, like, I just don't feel like <laughs> custody, they will never give that man custody of that child. Okay. And if anything, they'll probably give him supervised visits. That's it. That's the most that I see them actually giving him, if that. Because until he goes to therapy and he get his mental right, I just... And it seems like he probably got some mental, you know, this health disorder or whatever that he probably needs to be medicated for. I don't know. I don't know. Okay? I'm not a uh, psychiatrist. I'm not a therapist. Okay? I'm not a doctor. But from the, act, the, the, the actions that we've been seeing yeah something is not all the way right there and you want custody all this time I'm like no no i just don't see it for it then they talking about cynthia when she getting married she getting married in october this year supposedly if everything works out well we if 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 outside open back up that's what's gonna happen you know what i'm saying and um it's safe whatever that's what's gonna happen and um was just saying how you know, they got to figure out where they're going to stay at. Is she going to be up in L.A. or is she going to be up in Atlanta because she really don't want to leave Lake Bailey. But, you know, and Eva live right down the street from her or whatever. So, but Eva said, wherever you go, I'm going to be supportive. Moving on from that, you got Candy and Ty talking to a marriage counselor, okay? And um, basically about communication, and how things are not really going well and things build up and, you know, their issues and, you know, her always working. And then, you know, they have in this business relationship because they work so well together on the business why it's more business. And they haven't really just stopped to, you know, do the regular stuff. And then Ty just making it seem as if like 
Listen, Ty, this is what you marry. On the one hand, I get it. Okay, I want my hu my wife to come home and be with me or whatever. But at the same time, Ty, I feel like he complaining about this stuff as if he did not know that this was already going on. Okay, when you first got with Candy, you knew Candy was driven like this. Okay, you knew that they was she was driven. You knew that she was a workaholic. And some things like that don't really change. And you wanted her to change just for you, you know? And I understand. It was like, well, if you love me and this is our marriage or whatever, you would change and all that stuff and woo, woo, woo. But it just don't work like that instantly, okay? And I understand, you know, you got the kid. And and, and what he did say was, I, I kind of did agree with him, you know, on the fact that she could still work. And do all of that, but just 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 have a little bit of time out for us. You don't have to, you know, jump on every event and go to every event. And your friends not gonna be pissed off if they understand what's going on, especially the ones that are married and in relationships too. And they know that you have a busy schedule or whatever, and this is the only time that you have to spend with your family. You can bypass some of these events, okay? Yes, it was nice to be there for Porsche's event, okay? But you could have said, girl, I hit you up next time. You know, it's no thing, but I literally just got back from Chicago and I got to spend some time with my family. You know what I'm saying? And I'm pretty sure she would have understood. And that's that's the part where I understand where Todd is coming from. But also, like I said, Todd, you knew this was candy from the beginning. And she's sitting there crying once again, so, yeah. So, Candy gets a crying, talking about some she do have an issue with balance and stuff like that. To be quite honest, I don't care. I don't care. Because we've been seeing this whole thing this is, for the past couple of episodes. Basically, what they need to work on is their communication, their parenting style. We already know that Thai parents different. They bring up the whole example about, you know, um, Candy wanted to give Kayla, you know, some money for her birthday. But since um, Ty and her had a falling out, you know, Ty basically was like, no, don't give it to her. And he like, I'm trying to teach her, listen, you don't get stuff just because it's your birthday. No, you got to earn that shit. Okay. And Candy called Ty out, said, listen, at the end of the day, you be working too. You doing the same thing that you accusing me of. So what is it? You know, so they have to work on their communication. They have to work on balancing stuff out and mending and fusing together their parenting style and because it's all different from the backgrounds that they come from. Ty comes from New York and he probably comes from a single parent home and you know, you know, it was probably just a lot that was going on and he had to come up in a rougher environment than Candy did living down in Atlanta with her mom and, you know, being in this group or whatever. So, you know, they just gotta they just gotta get the shit together. The season finale is next week. Thank God, okay? Because if you can't tell by the way I was doing this review, I am over it because I had to push through this shit. But anyway, just to let you guys know, Insecure comes on in a few minutes, like at 9 o'clock, you know. In 45 minutes, Insecure comes on, uh, and I will be doing a uh, review for that. So, you guys be cool. Happy Easter once again. I'll see y'all later. Peace.